Hi there. Today, I will be talking about the value of learning in cognitive control allocation. Cognitive control refers to our ability to flexibly adapt our information processing mechanisms towards our goals. However, a growing number of theories and empirical studies suggest that cognitive effort is intrinsically costly, and that people consider this cost when choosing how much control to allocate to a task. These theories can successfully explain human behavior in studies in which subjects are asked to choose between tasks of different cognitive demand. For example, in the cognitive effort discounting task, as a task becomes harder, its subjective value compared to an easy task measured in monetary value decreases. At the same time, there is also evidence suggesting people also prefer tasks that require more cognitive control, with, for example, the concept of learned industriousness and the need for cognition. So which one is it? This paradox of effort has led to the idea that people find the exertion of cognitive effort intrinsically rewarding. However, there is, as of yet, no normative rationale for why this would be the case beyond the prospect of immediate rewards from the exertion of that effort. Here, we suggest that in some situations, this paradox may be the result of the value of learning. Consider the following dilemma. A student must decide between continuing to type with their index fingers, that is, hunting and pecking, or learning how to type properly. Hunting and pecking means that they will spend maybe half of their time on typing. They will get adequate grades, but they will not have much free time. Learning to type means, paradoxically, that they will spend more than half of their time on typing. They will have adequate grades, but they will have even less free time. However, choosing to learn will lead to an improvement at typing. And eventually, Better typing will mean less than half of their time spent on typing, perhaps better grades because they can spend more time on the content of their assignments, and actually more free time. So what does this mean in terms of the expected value of control? Well, hunting and pecking requires less control and leads to a higher immediate reward, meaning a higher immediate expected value of control which refers to the reward per control allocated. Learning to type requires more control and leads to a lower immediate reward, meaning a lower immediate expected value of control. However, after having learned, it will require less control and lead to both a higher immediate reward and a higher cumulative reward. Thus, the meta decision to learn to type must take into account the predicted future benefits of typing properly. If it does take into account those future benefits, it can explain, in this situation, the paradox of effort. Why one would invest more effort despite even lower immediate rewards? We sought to incorporate these ideas into a well-established theory of cognitive control allocation called the expected value of control theory or EVC theory. Imagine we have two tasks, a static task and a learnable task. We define a quantity, automaticity, that tells us how good we are at a task. For the static task, automaticity remains constant, whereas for the learnable task, automaticity increases with experience. Accuracy at a task is a function of both the current automaticity and the amount of control exerted. For example, for the static task in red, we can define an accuracy to control function as follows, where the higher the control, the higher the accuracy. For the learnable task, we have many such curves, depending on the current level of automaticity. The higher the automaticity, the less control required for an equal amount of accuracy. We now want to determine the expected value of control. 
To do that, we'll take just one of these accuracy to control curves and multiply it times some reward for that task. That gives us the payoff per amount of control exerted. We then subtract the cost of control and end up with a curve that tells us the expected value of control. The maximum of this curve determines the optimal amount of control to exert. Every level of automaticity will have its own EVC curve. For example, the static task in red has the following EVC curve with the following maximum. Similarly, the learnable task has all of these EVC curves depending on the agent's current automaticity. At the beginning of the task, when automaticity is low, the static task has a higher max EVC compared to the learnable task and should rationally be chosen. Later on in the task, when automaticity is high, the learnable task should be chosen. However, automaticity will not increase if it is not chosen initially, presenting a dilemma. How can we get the agent to choose the learnable task that will ultimately be more rewarding? Well, all previous computational instances of EVC theory only considered instantaneous expected value of control, what we will call a greedy EVC. We extended the EVC to include future discounted expected value of control, taking into account the values of learning. This is what we call the LEVC or learning EVC. If we do so and compare the EVC curves for both tasks on trial one, we get the following results. Although the greedy EVC um, has a higher max EVC for the static task, comparing these two solid curves and should rationally be chosen, for the learning EVC or LEVC, the learnable task has a higher max EVC when you take into account the future benefits of learning. Now let's take a quick look at the algorithm for the LEVC. On every trial, the agent compares the max EVC across control signals for both tasks and picks the task with the higher max EVC. However, because LEVC takes into account future discounted expected value of control, the EVC on trial one depends on all possible paths from trial one. If there are six trials, as in this example, that means two to the sixth possible paths. The agent picks the task with the highest max EVC and repeats the process on the next trial all the way to the end. Now here's a graphical representation of this tree representation where the um, task with the highest max EVC is chosen. In this case, it's been labeled as task L. On the next trial, uh, it is task L again, or the learnable task, all the way until the end when it only has two choices left and it chooses the one with the highest max EVC. Note that once a task is chosen, that will affect its future EVC curves. Also note that an agent's previous choices will affect its EVC curves as well, precisely because automaticity is gained through experience, that is, the choice to learn. We find that LEVC normatively accounts for the value of learning, and we show this with four separate quantities. First, when we compare a greedy EVC agent, here in red, against an LEVC agent, here in cyan, with exactly the same task parameters, we find that the LEVC agent has a higher max EVC during the entire simulation. Also important to note that the LEVC agent chooses the learnable task on every trial, whereas the greedy EVC agent chooses the static task on every trial. Second. When we look at the optimal control signal implemented, although the greedy EVC requires 
less control at the beginning of the task. The learn the LEVC agent requires even less control by the end. Remember, control is costly, so the less used, the better. Third, looking at instantaneous reward, again, although the greedy EVC agent has a higher initial instantaneous reward, the LEVC agent quickly overpasses it, becoming preferable by the end of the task. And finally, providing the strongest argument for the rationality of choosing to learn, although the greedy CEV agent has a higher initial cumulative reward, the LEVC agent acquires more reward over the lifetime of the simulation, indicating that indeed it is rational to take into account the value of learning. Now, what does the value of learning depend on? We find that it depends on three quantities in our model. First, the task horizon, or how long the agent will be doing the task. The longer the horizon, the higher the value of learning because there is both more time to learn and more time to reap the benefits of learning. Second, future discount factor, or how much the agent takes into account the benefits of learning down the line. The higher this factor, meaning the less discounting, the higher the value of learning. And finally, the learning rate. The faster the learning rate, the higher the value of learning. If learning is very slow, it may not be worth the investment vis-a-vis -vis a non-learning option with higher immediate rewards. Now at the beginning, I referred to one particular task showing people's distaste for exerting cognitive effort, the cognitive effort discounting task, in which as a task becomes harder, its subjective value decreases. But what happens if one of the tasks is learnable? To answer this question, we simulated a cognitive effort discounting task with the LEVC, where the harder task was learnable and the easier task was static. We found that across the three parameters that affect the value of learning, the learnability of the harder task actually increased its subjective value relative to the easier task providing a robust prediction that can be tested behaviorally. This result demonstrates LEVC's usefulness in terms of predicting human behavior and will allow us to falsify it going forward. There are, of course, a number of limitations with our current implementation of LEVC. Among these, we are exploring new algorithms beyond an exhaustive search with which people might explore the value of learning more realistically as well as making automaticity a function not only of task choice or experience, but also of task performance, again, making it more realistic. Thank you, and I'll take any questions.